Howdy folks, welcome to the video here at Ordnance Lab. We've got Steve with DNS Creations here. We did our video before with our shape charges and now we're moving on to the experimenting part. We're actually gonna be testing a bunch of different types of rockets and all kinds of different things, but to make sure that we manage expectations. Those of y'all that are expecting us to be like Werner Von Braun and raining V2s on London and stuff. Well, I guess old Werner didn't hit London the first time. Maybe the, not the 10th time, the 20th time, or even the 30th time. So on this video, make sure that like you're expecting to see a lot of booms. You may be slightly disappointed um, with it, but we'll save the suspense for y'all. And so we'll get started on launching some rockets. All right, so basically we brought out two different rocket variants. These are prototypes, they're developmental. We don't really know what they're about to do. So we basically just brought them out to test concepts, test limitations with 3D printing and 3D printing technology and see what might need work and what might need improvement and to see how it goes. Steve from DNS Creations returned to our test range with all sorts of goodies. Our last video, we demonstrated the 3D printed shape charges that he made. Those were literally a blast. Pun intended. Their performance went beyond expectations. Once we tested his shape charges, we moved on to the main event, 3D printed rocket testing. We set up a large wood target this time to improve hit probability. These are prototype rockets, so accuracy is still up in the air, as far as predicted performance. The first test we set up a guide wire of 100 meters in length. The idea is to launch a rocket via this guide wire to ensure it hits the target and does not fly off into oblivion, as we have experienced before. Basically, the guide wire will direct the rocket onto a steel target. The goal is to test the shape charge performance that we saw in the previous video while loaded into a 3D printed rocket. All right, so what we have here is a wire guided test. We're gonna um, basically tether this rocket to a wire to ensure that it hits our target. This is for safety and accuracy since we have a limited amount of tests available. This is a prototype weapon. We want to ensure that we hit this target. Our target here is a piece of AR-500 steel. If we can penetrate this target with our shape charge, we'll consider that to have been defeating the tank. Now, before we get started, this is, this is the internet, and there's always gonna be someone clutching their barrels about their failing rockets. Want to make sure that we're clear we have all the right licenses and registrations and all that stuff both with the atf and with the state department the rockets that we are manufacturing are controlled as destructive devices and as explosives under the national fire well controlled as destructive devices under the national firearms act and also as explosives we're fully licensed by the atf to be doing all of this stuff trust me they're totally aware of what we're doing but if one of y'all gets a wild hair up your rear end and you want to call the cops, make sure that, of course, the primary point of contact is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They are the first people to always call. But if you want to humor the American government with whatever silly things that you're concerned about, just call the Houston FBI office and you can waste their time reporting us to them or the McAllen field office of the ATF. But trust us, they know exactly what we're up to. And all this stuff is being done as part of a comprehensive risk control measures or as part of comprehensive risk control measures we have in place. We have this on an isolated location. None of the rockets have enough energy to depart the property or impact area and we've kept it uh kept people away and all that stuff so again don't do this at home because well it's probably illegal and unless you have all the uh correct licenses hanging on the wall the federal government will frown upon it but luckily we have all of our stuff together so let's get back to shooting stuff we were so sure this was going to work without issues the launch was perfect the guide wire was working as intended until it did not. Fortunately, we had plenty of cameras rolling and realized what happened. The guide wire actually saw through the rocket mount and it went haywire literally a few meters before the target. You can see here that the rocket went high into the right of the steel plate. It punches through the wood like flimsy human flesh and flies off into the distance. It opened like flimsy human skin. For the amount of work required for this test, it was a total bummer to see this. Steve put his pilot skills to good use and built a wood launcher mount for his AT-4 clone launcher tube. To safely launch the rockets, we will use radio control ignition. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just a little bit of inert testing. 
We've got uh, one of our smaller rocket motor rounds in. What we want to do is we want to test for safety and we want to make sure that everything is working, all systems are go. Uh, we've got it lined up on a plywood target down there. We're just going to test fire this and uh, see what happens. Firing three, two, one. It shot it out real hard, but it can drop. All right, so that one went uh, not according to plan. Need to aim a little bit higher. We haven't exactly zeroed this thing. That was a first test fire for this round. Here's a piece of it. This is about all we could find. The rest of it went scattered off to Never Never Land. But uh, we can examine this and uh, you know see how the uh, fusing system performed and get a little bit of data from that at least. So not terrible, not a huge loss. We got lots of rounds more to fire. All right, firing three, two, one. Whoops. We literally cannot catch a break here. The rocket booster went critical and blew up the launcher. All of Steve's artsy craft work was blown apart in a hundred pieces. Oh man, guys, this thing uh, kind of KO'd on us. This motor just came right apart. We're gonna go up to the lab, do some forensic analysis. We're gonna scrape together a new launcher. We got a lot more rounds to shoot. We're gonna modify them a little bit. Come right back to you. All right, well, we're on our final day. You were supposed to head back, what, yesterday? Yep. And so back to your job as an exotic dancer and you know very well paid. So he had to take some time off from uh, his job. But what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna do our final attempt to hit that target. One way or another, we'll get something on target, hopefully. Yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna take out that tank one way or another. It's been harassing us for three days. Uh, yeah, so what we'll do, we've got some modified designs that hopefully won't be like Maverick and Goose going ballistic like that other one that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise, but all right, let's get shooting. We proceeded to launch every rocket Steve made in hopes of getting a successful test. Ready! Sadly, we were met with a series of exotic failures that were just all over the place. This one's my favorite, especially Steve's reaction. We finally had one hit the target, only it did not detonate as intended. It punched through the wood like the guided wire rocket. We made the tactical decision to set up the launcher closer to a more durable target, namely our old blast wall. The idea here is the rocket has a higher chance to hit the target as it is closer. The blast wall should be durable enough to ensure the rocket detonates. In theory, anyways. Unfortunately, we faced the same luck as before with the previous launch, so none of the rockets worked as desired. While reviewing this video, we noticed the launcher tube had a slight downward bend. It wasn't noticeable to us at first, but this would definitely cause the rocket to have an undesired flight path. The spring-loaded fins did deploy as you can see here, so at least those worked. Now you may think all these failures were a total waste, but it did give us a lot of data as to what needs to be improved so that this project can become a success. Remember, before NASA got the Saturn V rocket to get us to the moon, they had a lot of rockets fail, including blowing up on the pad. Now you're probably wondering what we did with the UXO. Well, we placed it all in a pit, and then we blew it up. All right, well, we learned a couple of things today. Well, more than a couple of things. And unfortunately, in this video, we didn't have the success that we had last time of launching the rockets. We were hoping to actually have a like legit anti-tank weapon. We've managed to do some other testing with the actual charges where I think that you've come up with a legit like counter, not a counter armor weapon, but an anti-tank weapon if we can get it right. Yeah, that's right. Those, uh, those warheads were actually phenomenal in performance. We weren't able to get that last time. We uh, nailed it this time, I feel like, uh, especially with the small explosive volume and the diameter of the shape charge liner really small, super effective. Um, yeah, however, hopefully someone at Raytheon calls like a staff meeting and be like, why can these yahoos out in Texas get there, develop something with 3D printing while y'all do it for hundreds of thousands of dollars? Well, 
course the government's not <laughs> underwriting our research. Yeah, and the, the other thing, them, them being the liners were 3D printed. I don't know if anybody else has done that before. So, yep. so we can 3D do printed the... on a consumer grade printer, Ender yeah. 3. Yeah. And so we can again say, never been done before. So, all right, what we're gonna be doing right now is well, we've got the warhead down. Now we just need to work on the guidance. Like I said earlier that, you know, Werner von Braun didn't hit London the first time and we didn't hit our targets the first 20 something times or so. But we're gonna keep going out there and trying it again. And we show y'all both our successes and our failures because this is actual testing that we're doing and not just a completed product. So we're gonna have the guys from DNS come out um, again and we'll go yeah. blow some more stuff up. Or blow some more stuff up and hopefully get them to land on target. So, all right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab.